Oh my God, the existence of this coffee, there's a condemnation of the entire specialty premise. It's certainly a, a light-footed coffee. There's a certain uh, high-toned liveliness to it. Yeah. And I'm getting some rather grassy floral notes. I mean, they're floral notes, but I often like to use clover for those notes because you're sticking your nose in the clover and you're getting the grass as well. Yeah, this is more the grass without the clover. I guess it's a very light roasted coffee, or it seems that I'm not getting much else. It's kind of sweet, has a kind of a delicacy and liveliness. Yeah. I'm looking for herbal notes now since we have sweet grassy character. It's a little bit tea-like, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I'm getting a little bit of a mint, like maybe a spearmint. It's, yeah, it's, it's understated, but it's, yeah. Yeah, now I'm getting it, because I've uh, fastened on it, I'm getting it clearer. You know, it's not a black tea or even green tea. It's more of an herbal tea, mint tea. Curious in the nose, sometimes you, you get a sense of the coffee's viscosity, I know, which is impossible. Through association, I think, I would say this is a light-bodied coffee. It might be possible through experience. Well, it's, it's thin and watery in flavor. Wow, this is a shocker. <laughs> well, it's a shocker because you know what the coffee is, right? That's right, that? that's why, that's right, and I'm trying hard not to blurt it out. So yours is very light-bodied too, right? Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. That's why I said it was a shocker, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't, on our end, make a mistake when we brewed it. Mm -mm. It just sort of disappears in the finish. It vanishes. Nice. Some of these, yeah. a couple of these others that we were critical of for being lazy, but they had, they did carry into the finish. They carried some characters. Right, right. They were lazy to the finish, but this lies down at the finish. This isn't even lazy. It quits before it finishes, huh? It's left the building, yeah. Boy, that's an amazingly thin, watery sort of cup. I mean, you could probably try to praise it as delicate. It's terrible, really. It's not a very sens good sensory descriptor. It doesn't express much. I'm ready to quit on this baby. Yeah, there we are. Oh my God! I know, that's why I, you now you understand my comment, I just... This is grotesque. This is a insult to the consumer. This is not the Starbucks we know, or the Sumatra we know. It's a sign of the failure of the entire specialty industry in a certain level because Sumatra is such a characteristic origin and there are many people who, who only drink, I have friends who only drink Sumatra, usually peat Sumatra, but Sumatra is a very uh, distinctive origin because of the processing method. So in Sumatra, in, in the heart of uh, Lintung, a classic Sumatra growing region, did a um, mechanical wet process. In other words, the beans are, are go through one, one machine that uh, takes off the skin and sometimes not the skin, sometimes there are two machines, one that takes off the skin, the other takes off everything else, the sticky stuff that is usually uh, removed through fermentation and washing. Kind of mechanical washing. People used to call it aqua pulping uh, after the name of an old machine that did it. Of all the processing methods, it's least likely to impart any character to the coffee. And what's so shocking is that, of course, Sumatra is given its character in large part because of the wet hauling processing special kind of uh, Indonesian processing that yeah. only happens really in Indonesia. I can only assume that this is a mechanically wet processed. So you're saying they're, they're, they're doing a different process? Well, yeah. this, this was 15 years ago too. One of the guys I went to Sumatra with at the time was a uh, coffee broker in large quantities of coffee, and he yeah. bought this coffee from this mill that was mechanically processed and sold it as, as Sumatra. 
And that was 15 years ago. So I can only assume that something like that is going on. Consumers maybe can think of it as, as a abbreviated or shortcut wet process. In other words, because you're cutting out the sure. ferment step. Most of us feel adds adds some character to the coffee. Yeah, I, they say but so. But above all, you're cutting out all of the special nuance that's given the coffee by the characteristic Sumatran processing method. It's called wet hulling. So this is not a wet hulled Sumatra. They're, somebody who comes to Sumatra thinking they're going to get what Sumatra is famous, a heavy body, often a kind of a fruity, earthy taste. And this has no fruity, earthy taste. This has almost no taste. And certainly it has a very ridiculously light body. The existence of this coffee from a major producer is a condemnation of the entire specialty premise that you'll get a characteristic, yeah. if you buy right. a coffee from one of these regional, in a sense, brands, right? Sumatra is kind of mm -hmm. a brand that's free if you buy the Sumatra coffee. Uh, it just mocks it. It turns it into a joke. Folks, this is just I, an... I'm sorry to be so heavy, but this is just an insult to Starbucks and to the specialty coffee industry. It is... I'm finished. Uh, that is... I, I, there's no <laughs> way I can... <could>, yeah. <laughs> Preach it, Reverend. Zero. Thanks. Z zero percent. Okay, so they did a great yeah. job of packaging this stuff. I probably won't even use this because I don't think I could top what you said. But I will say this, this is the first time I think in my life I've ever had a Sumatra coffee from anybody that I didn't recognize. Yeah, it's hard to recognize it even as coffee. No. You know. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> right, even as that, but, but it's... It's so thin-bodied, it's so inexpressive. Yeah, it's not... Um, yeah. makes me love these other coffees, which at least uh, tasted like, <laughs> like coffee. And again, f from, I just want to clarify that I'm not necessarily particularly criticizing Starbucks. I'm just right. saying that the existence of this coffee calls the premises on which the specialty coffee industry is based into question. It mocks it. It turns it into a joke. The wet hauling is a unique Indonesian process, particularly yeah. associated yeah. with Sumatra. And the quantities of coffee produced by that method are probably very quite limited and uh, consequently rather expensive. And so somebody is buying anything that came out of Sumatra and packaging it as Sumatra. The point is about origins is that or, this legacy origin character that we associate, that consumers still associate with, with origin names, is based on certain characteristic processing methods and uh, tree varieties. In the case of Sumatra, the tree varieties may not be very important because they're, they're not distinctive tasting uh, tree varieties, but the processing method is, and processing method is the essence of the Sumatra cup. It's probably happening all over the world. We're just losing. On one hand, producers are doing fancy things like anaerobic and selling the coffee for a lot of money. On the other hand, you have producers who are just big mills. They're just kicking out tasteless shit. Excuse me, you'll have to cut that, but I mean, as you can tell, I'm really <laughs> outraged by this. <laughs> I love and hate it. You know, I love it from a theatrical point of view, but I hate it from a point of view that I share with you, and that is my offense. It, I mean, the, if it's one thing I thought I could count on and saved it for last was the Sumatra <laughs> from Starbucks, which I think Starbucks has known how to use Sumatra too, for the duration right. of their... Yeah. I expected a very yeah. different flavor yeah. footprint. Please like and subscribe if you want to see more shows like this.